Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and now we're going to talk about tracebacks. So the traceback that Python prints might initially look a little intimidating, but it is extremely useful for understanding what happened to cause the exception. So let's look at a traceback and see what it can tell us. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to define a function called square root that takes a number, and we'll say if number is less than zero, then raise a value error and say no negative numbers, please. And if not, then just return number times 0.5. That'd be the square root, right? Raised to the 1 half. And then let's define another function called uh, quadratic that will take arguments a, b, and c. And we will say d equals b squared, well, b squared minus 4 times a times c. And then we're going to return a negative b minus square root d divided by 2 times a. But we're also going to add in here, I line these up, yeah, there we go, uh, negative b plus, because it's plus or minus, right, square root d uh, divided by 2 times a, 2 times a. And it looks something like that. So now I have a square root that takes a square root and it handles an exception and for a value, uh, raises a value error, raises a value error exception. And we've defined this quadratic formula that takes arguments a, b, c, creates a d, and then returns negative b minus uh, the negative square root of d uh, divided by 2 times a and then plus. So you get your plus or minus there. And then finally I'll call this and say quadratic and let's pass 1. 0, 1, okay, which would be like saying um, x squared plus 1 equals 0, something like that. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen here? What do you think is going to happen here? Let's run this, python trace.back.py. All right, traceback. So, um, I think you understand what I did in the code, so I'm going to skip this um, part of explaining it because I already explained it a lot. But I am going to point out that in quadratic, we did return a plus and minus value, right? So it's often useful to read tracebacks from bottom to top, okay? On the very last line, you have an error message telling us what went wrong. A value error, no negative numbers, please. So the preceding lines tell us where the exception was raised. So you can see here uh, line 3 in square root, value error, no numbers please. And if, I, and if it's like, okay, well that's where, the, that's where the exception came from. And if you go back up to the top here, line 8, we can see in line 8, oh, okay, I got a negative number here. And then finally in line 11 is where it was actually called and the arguments were passed which ultimately led to a negative number. Now, this might be confusing because you did not pass any negative numbers, but you got a negative number error. So you might be like, why? That doesn't make any sense, right? So the, anyway, so that's how you would read that from bottom to top. Um, the traceback is like a map that shows you the path through the code and where the exception happened. If you follow the path and examine the code in each function along the way, it's often really useful when you want to understand why an exception happened. So in the next section, I'm going to go over how to actually handle this, and it will be a lot more in, in depth. But here you can see how something that works perfectly fine and um, can produce uh, a raise value error um, because there's a negative number when you yourself pass no negative arguments. So even in this, it's like we're getting there, but this is confusing to the end user who's like, well, I didn't give you a negative number. So let's go ahead and take a look on how we're going to handle exceptions.